In this lesson, you'll learn to create your first Android app. You'll learn how the overall app development methodology works, and you'll use Android tools to create a simple app that you'll test on the virtual device you created in a previous lesson. This app shows the basic major components in the Android app development process. Let's first take a look at this center section where you see an Eclipse screen. The Android development process is built around the development tools you learned about in previous lessons, accessed via the drop-down menus and toolbar buttons. A key element in developing apps in this environment is object-oriented programming, which is all about reusing code and making the development process as efficient and painless as possible. Using object-oriented programming techniques will leverage to the maximum extent possible existing sources of program code shown here on the left. Because code reuse is a dominant feature of Android and object-oriented programming, you'll often begin developing an app or a part of an app using existing code from sources such as those you see here. This will be the case with the app we'll develop in this lesson. But let's take a quick look at these code sources. Wizards and refactoring are software tools that can generate or rework code. You'll use a wizard in this lesson to generate a start at your first app. Sample apps are provided by Google on the Android website, by us for this course, and they can also be found at other sources on the web. The same is true of sample code, except that they're pieces of an app instead of the whole thing. Java and Android libraries provide the base code for the core functionality of Android. Other libraries supporting other APIs are also available. Hand code is the terminology I'm using for code you'll write yourself, and this code can also be reused. So overall, you'll be taking reusable code from these sources using the Eclipse integrated development environment with Android tools to create your finished applications. For larger development projects involving multiple developers, you might have a project management overlay on top of a structure like this. For this course, though, we'll be focusing on you as an individual developer. As one last step before we start developing your app, we're going to create a workspace dedicated to this course. Let's call it Android Development Course. That means you'll create a folder with a name somewhere on your file system. As you can see in this graphic, I put mine in a folder on my D drive under Don Cowan and Android. So please pause the course now and create the Android Development Course folder where you'd like it on your computer. Come back to this point when you're done. Congratulations for making it through all the software installation and setup we've done so far. I'm sure you're anxious to get into the real heart of development, creating an app. So let's do it. First, pause the course and start Eclipse, as you see I've done, and come back to this point. Make sure you're in the workspace you just created. If not, click on File, Switch Workspace, and browse until you find your Android development course folder and switch to that workspace. It's a new workspace, so you might be seeing a welcome screen that looks like this. If you do, let's just delete that screen by clicking on the X here. You should see a few perspectives appear shown in the tabs in the upper right. If you don't see them, you can open them using Window, Open Perspective, and then click on the tab. So you'd open Java, and you can open the debug perspective. Let's go back to Java. Now we're going to create your Android app. This first app will be small and simple, but you'll see how the development process fits together and how to use the tools we've installed. So to begin, click on File, New, and then click on Android Application Project. And you should see this screen appear. In the first field, type in First App Project. Now look down at the package name, and you'll get a little explanation of what that means. This sequence of three qualifiers is used to manage your app. So these three qualifiers, com, dot, in this case, example, dot first app project is used to manage your app, including in the Google Store. So you need to create a middle qualifier that's going to be unique in the Google Play Store. And maybe you have a company name you want to use, or maybe you might use your personal name. 
Now, I have a website based on my name, www.donkcowan.com. So I know that Don K. Cowan will likely be unique. Now, here's what you can do to check for uniqueness in Google Play. Let's bring up a browser with Google Play in it. And using the search box, key in the name that you think you'd like to use. In my case, I'm going to put in my name. It's safer to put it in quotes. And when you've done that, search on the name. And hopefully, you'll see it come up with nothing. We couldn't find anything for your search. That means that that name isn't being used for the moment. So you might want to pause the course now, choose a name, and check it on Google Play for availability. Once you've done that, come back to the new application wizard, and in that middle qualifier, put the name you've chosen. In my case, my name. Now drop down and click on the minimum required SDK. As you can see in the explanatory message below, this is the lowest version of Android your app will support. The lower you go, the more devices your app will run. As the message says, if you use API 8, Android 2.2 Froyo, you'll reach 95% of all devices. On the other hand, the lower you go, the fewer features will be available for you to use. So let's pick, for now, API 14. Now click on the next button, the Target SDK. This is the highest version the app is known to work with. Let's pick API 16, 4.1 Jelly Bean. Now click on the next button, the Compile With selection. That's the SDK that we'll use for compilation. Let's also pick API 16. Now drop down and select the theme, which will give us a base look and feel for the user interface. Let's select Holo Light with Dark Action Bar. And click Next. So let's go up to the top. We're going to select creating a custom launcher icon. And let's take a look at launcher icons. The custom launcher icon is the icon image that appears on the user home screens to represent the application. It's the icon that the user taps to start the app. Now back to the wizard. We're going to have it create an activity. We're not going to mark this project as a library which would be used by multiple apps. Let's leave that unchecked. We're going to let it create the project in the workspace that we're working in at the moment, which is the Android course workspace. And we'll leave this unchecked. Working sets are ways to group your applications so that you only see a portion of them in the package explorer. Let's leave that unchecked for now. And we'll click Next. This screen shows how the launcher icon is being configured. We'll leave it the way it is. You can always create custom icons later, and we'll look at that in a future lesson. So click Next, and choose the blank activity. Next. And this screen gives us the option to change the default names for Java and XML layout files that will be created. And we'll just leave them as is, and click Finish. Notice these red X's here. These indicate errors, and you notice that they just disappeared. What happened is the system needs time to do all the setup and verification. And if the X's remained, it would indicate that you had real bugs in your program, and you would have to go into debugging and find out what the problem is. But they're gone now, so everything looks OK. So now let's fire up the app on our virtual device. If you don't already have your virtual device running, we're going to start it now. So click on the Virtual Device Manager. Select the AVD for Course 5.1 in WVGA. And click Start. And Launch. Now go back to Eclipse. Close this screen. And click on the Debug button right there. And you might see this screen come up, which is asking you to choose which device to use. I happen to have two instances of the virtual device running. So I'm going to click on that one. And there's our app. As you can see, it's a simple app. It just displays the text, Hello World, and an action bar at the top. So there you have it, your first Android app.
Yes, it's true, you haven't done any actual coding yet, but don't worry, that's coming up soon. And remember, many apps start the way yours has, using existing or generated code as a foundation from which to begin.